Remember the drug problem that a lot of people unfortunately think probably tonight is over and not a problem anymore. Unfortunately, it is a problem. It just hasn't received some of the media attention that it did a number of years ago. Uh, to give you an idea of what's happening, we wanted to talk about this book tonight called Recreational Drugs. Now, the title is a little misleading uh, because it's not what it sounds, but it's a compendium of the drugs that are available today in various forms that are used in a recreational purpose. Uh, and we'll talk to two of the five authors tonight with us. Uh, first, Marjorie Klein, representing she and her husband, Donald Klein, who's a lawyer in Miami, right? Yes. And you're a Miami writer. Yes. And Lawrence Young, representing his wife. Linda. Linda Young. Right. And then the fifth is? Uh, Dorian Byer, who's a woman attorney in New York. Very good. Now, why did you write the book? We wrote the book really because uh, our primary motivation uh, was the fact that we have pre-teenage and teenage children ourselves and as a result began to have dialogues in our own households about drugs and they were full of questions. Uh, there's apparently much more in the way of drug activities going on in our schools today than we as parents like to realize. Uh, our feeling of having an open dialogue with our children all the time is that if they indeed could have good information available, uh, it would be very helpful. Well, now, I presume in putting this book together, you also uh, became knowledgeable about the extent of the drug problem and the drug abuse in our society, yes. at least in Miami, South yeah. Florida. Well, yeah. this book What is the status? Oh. It's, yeah. well, Miami. Well, the Miami. status of uh, the drug problem in Dade County or yeah. the country? Let's talk about Dade County. Dade County, uh, the drugs, drug use in Dade County is much more widespread than anybody's willing to admit. The schools are saturated with drugs. Now, and let's define drugs. What are you talking drugs about? Drugs are everything from um, marijuana, LSD, and cocaine to alcohol, tobacco, and uh, caffeine, and which we cover pills. in the book. And oh, of course, the gamut of pills from amphetamines, amphetamines barbiturates, tranquilizers, uh, non barbiturate sleeping pills. They are just, there's, multitude of, there's a multitude of drugs that nobody even. Is aware Can it exists be stopped? Is, I mean, should we look to our school officials and say, you're not doing your job to keep drugs out of the school? Well, I tell assault? you, that, that's, uh, in my own viewpoint, uh, that's one of the things I think that, has, that I've changed about as a result of being involved in this book. Um, the problem is not any longer going to be solved simply by uh, legislating it out of existence or by criminal penalties or by depending upon the schools to in fact, instill attitudes in our children that we are really responsible for instilling in our children. Mm -hmm. I believe education is important. I believe the school plays a role. I believe the church can play a role. And I believe that the home is the most important place of all in the role. If we teach our children to have proper attitudes about drugs, and by that we mean the gamut of drugs, yeah. because we really mean alcohol, alcohol, which is a drug, tobacco, which is a drug, as well as LSD, heroin, cocaine, whatever the case may be. Only when a parent is armed with correct information can they begin to have a dialogue with their children that will prove beneficial to both sides. Children know much more about drugs today than their parents do. Well, for example, I was thinking when you made the statement you did, Marjorie, that there's a lot of drugs in Dade County schools. There's a lot of parents watching now who's, who just can't quite believe that because, first of all, their kids don't talk to them about it and there's no evidence that their kids are using drugs. What do you say to those parents who are a little disbelieving of what you've said? When we began writing the book, I was totally ignorant about what was going on in the schools. I chose to believe that perhaps there was a little marijuana smoking going on and maybe a few kids were dropping pills. But the, that was few and far between. The, the drug problem was um, not as prevalent as it was in the 60s. Mm -hmm. We had an interesting anecdote that took place right at our publishers uh, along these lines. When the book was in its galley form, the, the rough form of the book before it's actually printed, uh, I suppose all the people at Macmillan take it home to look at the galleys. Yeah. And one of the executives of Macmillan who had the book at home uh, told us that his 13-year-old daughter picked it up, started reading it, and in fact ended up coming to him, opening up a dialogue that had never existed in their house. Uh, telling him about all of her drug fears, drug worries, the uses uh, that drugs w uh, were taking place in high school, and in fact ended up greatly relieved and 
with a rapport in this, uh, about the subject with her parents that she'd never had before. You know, there's a, there's a, a feeling that I notice uh, among parents, among people, and that is, I guess it's a basic feeling that uh, something out of sight's out of mind, to use an old cliche, and that some parents would be very apprehensive to just call a kid in and say, hey, let's talk about drugs, you know, for, for fear that the child say, I guess it's okay if my folks want to talk about drugs. What's your response to that fear? Well, yeah, well I, I understand the fear. I think as a parent, anybody would understand it. Our feeling in writing this book originally was to not take a pro-drug position and not take a con-drug position, but simply to state the facts. This is a, a subject area where ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is very potentially damaging. We are talking about substances in some cases that are addictive substances, that can be very dangerous substances, that in fact can kill both children and adults. And without information, nobody can properly deal with the problem. Uh, cocaine, now we hear a lot about cocaine. Is it damaging and dangerous to use? It can be. Eight uh. million people have tried it in the country, and on the one hand, the hospitals aren't full of people, so that would seem to indicate that it's not quite as damaging. I think before we wrote this book, uh, I thought any of us, heroin. we thought it was heroin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, it is not heroin. It is not an addictive substance except for people who use it in rather large quantities mm -hmm. who may become psychologically addicted. But okay. I'm shocked, and I use the word advisedly, to see the Miami Herald's Tropic magazine have a cover, mm -hmm. a uh, which really made a very light touch of cocaine, and I don't regard cocaine as a light subject, really. Well, again, uh, you know, there's, a, there's a place where it can be light. Uh, the Woody Allen movie, Annie Hall recently, jokes about it by having him sneeze into a big batch right. of cocaine, and right. the audience seems to know what he's doing because they laugh. Uh, but on the other hand, no, I, I think the mistake with the Tropic story, if I may yeah. be so bold sure. as to criticize somebody, was not with the story. I think they did the community a service in presenting information. I think they did a disservice to the information by the cover picture right. that they used of two young Americans snorting coke out of a Coca-Cola glass and having fun. That's presenting a fun side that, while it may be the motivation for use, almost was too flip. So uh, your son says to your dad, I want to use some cocaine. What do you say to him? You say, I, cocaine <laughs> can do this to you, and it can do this to you, but it can't do this, and it can't do this. And you try to present as an, an objective picture of cocaine and also add that uh, no substance used by that age group is going to be that beneficial. And it is illegal. And it's illegal. Well, that's that's a major thing. Small... Yeah, I think it's kind of how we cautioned our children years ago because of the danger of pregnancy or things yeah. of that, those concerns. This is very much the same in, in some regards. None of us want to see our children arrested. Hundreds of thousands, in fact millions of people in the country have been arrested. I think part of our drug problem is that uh, we have treated it as a legal problem rather than as a medical problem, and it really is both. Um, we need to take a fresh new look at all our drug laws and at our drug habits and almost start from scratch to see what everything is all about. And that's what we hope to do in the book. We, we try to take an objective view of everything that we could uh, find, and uh, that's the result. Mm -hmm. Our bottom line in this book, I think, if there, if there is a bottom line, and uh, it really relates to the fact that we cover a gamut of things ranging from uh, drugs that we take as lightly as caffeine to LSD mm -hmm. and so on, is that moderation is really the byword. It really, as in all things in life, if one is seeking pleasures, and that's generally why people begin with drugs, uh, they should do their seeking moderately, and they'll avoid a great deal of the trouble that befalls people. By the way, the title is a little misleading. As I said, Recreational Drugs, explain that title to us. Uh, very briefly, it's not something that we coined uh, as a title. The term Recreational Drugs has become accepted in the scientific and academic community now as the broad description for those drugs people use for mind and body alteration outside of the sphere of, pr of uh, drugs prescribed for a specific uh, medical problem. Right. Well, again, I'll show you the book, and it's in paperback, for five ninety-five, and it's the easiest, quickest place to get, I guess, the latest information on almost every kind of drug you might want to use or hopefully not use, uh, recreational drugs. We'll be right back.